after finding out inductance of a transmission line let us try to find out capacitance of the line so the formula for capacitance is charge divided by voltage difference due to the charge so to find out capacitance on a line we will consider the let's say conducted is cylindrical we will consider that to this conductor we have a charge q per unit length and due to this charge we will try to find out voltage difference between the two conductors okay due to this charge we will try to find out the voltage difference and for, for calculating c we will divide the voltage difference we will divide the charge q by the voltage difference and how would we calculate the voltage difference when we will have charge q then we will find out the electric field using gauss law and with the formula e is equal to minus tv by dr or v12 is nothing but integration of electric field dr from 1 to 2 so with this formula we will find out the voltage difference so from charge we will have electric field using gauss law what is gauss law the total surface integration of electric flux is nothing but charge enclosed with this formula we will find out the electric field d and e are related as d is equal to epsilon into e so with this formula we will find out the electric field and after electric field we will try to find out the voltage difference let's say we have a cylindrical conductor and this cylindrical conductor is carrying a charge q per unit length okay so let's say this is the a section of long conductor let's say the length is l and it is carrying charge q per unit length now due to this uh, conductor and the charge on the conductor let us try to find out difference between the potential of two points let's say this is d1 and this is d2 okay or before that let us try to find out electric field at any distance x from the axis of the cylinder let's say try to find out electric field at this point okay so passing through this point we will draw a coaxial cylinder we will draw a coaxial cylinder such that on the each part of surface of this coaxial cylinder e will be same because each part of this coaxial cylinder will be at same distance x from the axis of the cylindrical wire okay now let us try to apply the <coughs> gauss law so d dot ds integration will be charged enclosed okay so on each surface d will be constant or let us represent p as epsilon into e dot ds will be charged enclosed or e dot ds will be charge enclosed divided by epsilon epsilon will be the permittivity of the medium since e will be same throughout the surface integration of ds will be epsilon and what will be ds ds will be total surface area of the cylinder and q is the total charge enclosed total charge enclosed 
by the surface area by the surface okay so what is the total surface area the total surface area of the cylinder will be 2 pi the total surface area will be 2 pi r into length f so p into 2 pi the radius is x and the length is l this will be equal to total charge enclosed now q is the charge per unit length so the total charge from here to here will be charge per unit length into the length so q into l divided by epsilon so l and l will be cancelled so e will be q divided by 2 pi x epsilon volt per meter okay so at any distance x electric field is can be given by this formula now let us try to find out the potential difference between let's say this point is t1 this point is t2 okay the direct obviously the direction of electric field will be outside the surface so we will apply the formula dv by dx is nothing but or electric field is nothing but the rate of decrease of potential difference with distance so this will be equal to q divided by 2 pi epsilon x so v will be nothing but or the change in electric field will be minus q divided by 2 pi epsilon x dx sorry q divided by 2 pi epsilon x dx let's say you are moving from point 1 to point 2 so what will be change in potential let's say here you have potential v2 here you have potential v1 so the change in potential while moving from 1 to 2 this will be v2 minus v1 is equal to minus you are moving from point 1 to point 2 so first electric field of point 1 then 2 or if you will take this minus to left hand side what will you you will have v1 minus v2 will be 1 to 2 uh, q divided by 2 pi epsilon 1 by x dx 1 by x dx and what is v v1 minus v2 v1 minus v2 can be written as v12 the potential difference a12 q divided by 2 pi epsilon this will give you ln x from 1 to 2 okay it means ln was distance of the position 2 minus distance of position 1 so v12 is q divided by 2 pi epsilon ln position of point 2 so this will be let let's say this distance is d2 this will be d2 divided by d1 sorry here we will have ln so this is the formula to find out potential difference between two points due to a current carrying conductor having charge q per unit length okay so we will apply this formula to find out capacitance between the capacitance of a conductor let's first assume two wire system let's say this is wire x this is wire y first for incoming current and other for returning current so if you if this conductor will carry a current of a charge q per unit length obviously the another conductor will carry minus q per unit length okay let's say these are the two conductors x and y 
ठीक है सो दिस टू कंडक्टर्स विल बी हेव एज टू प्लेट्स ऑफ कैपेसिटर एट इन चार्ज क्यू एंड माइनस क्यू ओके सो द कैपेसिटेंस विल बी क्यू डिवाइडेड बाय वोल्टेज डिफरेंस बिटवीन द सो वोल्टेज डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू कंडक्टर्स सो ऑल वी हैव टू डू इज टू फाइंड आउट द वोल्टेज डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू कंडक्टर्स and for finding out voltage difference we will apply this formula let's say we have to find out voltage difference between x and y this is voltage difference between two point due to a current carrying current current carrying conductor okay here we have two current carrying conductors so we will find out the voltage difference between the two carrying conductors separately so let us first try to find out voltage difference between x and y vxy due to this first conductor so what will be vxy according to this formula the charge per unit length is q divided by 2 epsilon ln distance of this conductor from this conductor only okay okay first according to this formula first write down the distances q divided by 2 epsilon ln d2 what is d what is represented by 2 2 is for y here so here we will represent dy divided by dx okay now in the calculation of capacitance we will consider that this conductor is an ideal conductor and there is no the re internal resistance of conductor is zero okay and if th this is a perfect conductor the potential inside a perfect conductor electric field is zero okay if inside electric field is zero e is equal to minus dv by dx if inside a conductor electric field is zero the rate of change of potential will be zero so inside a perfect conductor this is a let's say this is a conducting surface so inside this surface at each point as well as on the surface the potential will be same at each point okay so if you are interest, interested to find out the potential difference or the potential of this conductor potential inside this conductor will be equal to the potential at surface okay so if we take the potential at surface vx as the this will be nothing but vx minus vy okay so potential of conductor x inside this inside this conductor can be taken as the potential of the surface only and for surface vx can be taken as the radius of this conductor okay so i just want to explain why i just wanted to explain why at the place of vx we can take the radius of the first conductor okay so we will have 2 pi epsilon ln what is dy dy is the distance between the these two conductors let us take this distance as d divided by radius of the conductor so this is the potential difference between conductor x and y due to the charge on conductor x only okay now let us try to find out the same potential difference due to charge on y conductor we have we again have to find out vxy and we will add these two potential differences but at the place of vxy let us first write the expression of vyx what will be vyx charge divided by 2 pi epsilon charge on conductor y ln d2 divided by d1 so at the place of 2 at the place of 2 we have x here so distance of conductor x from y divided by dy so vyx will be what is qy qy is nothing but minus q minus q divided by 2 by epsilon ln 
dx is nothing but distance of conductor x from conductor y. So this distance is nothing but t divided by dy will be the radius of conductor y. Here we will have radius of conductor x. Okay, so what will be dxy? The potential difference due to the potential difference dxy due to charge on conductor y. Vxy will be minus of Vyx and minus minus then we will have plus Q and then D divided by R1. So that what, what will be the total difference? The total potential difference Vxy will be the potential difference due to charge on conductor X plus the potential difference due to charge on conductor Y. So the Vxy total will be addition of these two quantities. So this we will have Q divided by 2 epsilon ln ln d square divided by rx into ry. Let us assume that both the conductors have same radius. So here also we will have r square or then we will have Q divided by 2 will be 2 will come outside the log. So here we will have pi epsilon and n d by r where d is the distance between the conductors and r is the radius of conductor. So this is the potential difference v x y. So the c x y can be written as q divided by charge on each conductor divided by the potential difference between x and y that is q divided by Q divided by pi epsilon ln d by r. So Q and Q will be cancelled and we will get pi epsilon divided by ln d by r. So this is the potential difference between x and y. Now consider uh, let's say we have two conductors and these are let's say supplied by center tap transformer. Okay. This is the first conductor, okay. here you may have some load, this is another, this is the conductor for returning current, okay. This total capacitance, this total capacitance we have found as pi epsilon divided by ln d by r and let's say uh, this current was supplied by center tap transformer or The neutral is this is grounded okay so we will have equal potential drop between the between any line and the ground let's say the total potential difference here is p here we will have a potential difference p by 2 actually we are interested in finding out the line to ground capacitance or line to neutral capacitance instead of the capacitance, which capacitance between the lines. Okay. So if we have, if we will have, if voltage is halved, what what will be the effect on capacitance? If this voltage is halved here, the capacitance will be doubled. So capacitance between any line and neutral will be two pi epsilon divided by ln d by r okay and this whole capacitance can be broken into two parts if this is c this will be 2c and this will also be 2c 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 in series will give you c capacitance also c y n will be 2 pi epsilon divided by ln by d by r Okay, so by this derivation, uh, I wanted to explain the basic concepts involved in calculation of capacitance. So you have to assume charge on a conductor due to that charge. First find out electric field, then the potential difference and then finally capacitance. As we discussed in the in case of inductance, 
the formula for inductance, the per phase inductance was 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln gmd divided by gmr. So, here also uh, before discussing further, let me write down the general formula for capacitance, the per phase capacitance or let us say line A and neutral. The per phase capacitance, the formula for cap per phase capacitance in any system, this will be 2 pi epsilon divided by ln gmd divided by gmr not for any system this is for balanced positive sequence charge okay balanced positive sequence charge distribution this formula will be applicable in case of unequal phase spacing in the voltages in a stranded conductors, stranded and bundled conductors. It can be derived, derived with the same concept but that involves only mathematics apart from the concept that we have already discussed. So, I am not doing that. Let us say we have 3 wire system, equally a spaced 3 wire system, distance is T. So, GMT will be D into D into D. Okay, if we consider this conductor only, we have only two types of distances. So, D into D to power 1 by 2 that is D. And what will be GMR? In case of calculation of inductance, uh, this, this GMR and this GMR are different. Here, what we do? this is taken as r dash while in case of calculation of capacitance this will be simply radius ok. So, the capacitance between line A and neutral will be 2 pi epsilon divided by ln d divided by r only. For standard conductors ok in one con in one conductor only there will be two or more sub subconductors ok. So, in that case uh, we apply the same formula as the case of single conductor, but we will have to consider we will have to take some approximations. We will have to take the approximation of uniform charge distribution. uniform charge distribution. If we have instead of one single conductor, if you have a strand of conductors, the charge distribution are not uniform. They are not exactly uniform as in the case of single conductor, but for the calculation of capacitance of stranded conductor, we assume that we have a uniformly charged distribution. The second assumption is the electric field near the surface of conductor of conductor is same as the electric field of solid conductor. Let us assume instead of a standard a stranded conductor we have a single conductor of radius of of radius equal to the outer part of these stranded conductors and if we had an electric field E here. So, on the surface of each stranded conductor we assume that we will have the same electric field ok, but this is not the case. 
due to the due to charge or other conductor there will be some distortion in the magnitude of electric field but for the calculation of capacitance we assume that this e and here e will be same okay and the third assumption is uh, this assumption this is also the same assumption that we take in case of solid conductor also that the resistivity of the resistivity of the conductor is zero it is a pure conductor and if resistivity is zero the electric field electric field inside the conductor is inside the conductor will be zero inside the conductor equal to zero which is possible only in ideal case if conductor has some resistivity there will be the electric field inside the conductor this will not exactly be zero okay so for a standard conductor also we can apply this formula let us take an example of a standard conductor let's say we have three wire system this is for a this is for b and this is for c this is a a dash b b dash c c dash the distance between the two strands are this distance is d radius is r distance between a and b phases let's say d a b here we have d b c and phase a and c r this is d a c here we have balanced positive sequence charges that is q a plus q b plus q c will be equal to zero but due to unequal phase spacing i am not the phase spacing is not equal due to unequal phase spacing unbalanced positive sequence voltage or we can say <coughs> due to unequal phase spacing balanced positive sequence voltages are not obtained obtained so line to neutral voltage line to neutral voltages will be different will be different hence giving unequal phase to neutral capacitances but this can be avoided using the transposition of the line the transposition i have talked about while in case of calculation of inductance but the balance balance can be but the balance can be achieved by transposition of the line that is interchanging the position of the conductor a b and c for equal one third of the lines one third of the length of the line so in this case if we choose transposition the same formula can be applied and if we will have transposition we will have three distances okay the distance between position 1 and 2 2 and 3 and 1 and 3 so gmd will be d12 d23 d31 to power 1 by 3 and gmr will be what will be gmr for this conductor we have two distances first is its radius only 
and the second distance is d. Similarly, for second conductor, its radius into d. So we have four type of we have four distances. So either we can do r into r into d into d to power one by four, or simply we can say r into d to power one by two into r into d to power one by two. Then again multiply these two quantity and power one by two. So overall you will get GMR as R into D. In case of calculation of inductance at the place of R we have to take R dash. And in one case let us say in place of two conductors we have three conductors. In A phase only let us say we have three conductors. So what will be GMR here? Let's say distance between each conductor is d and its radius r r. So for first conductor, there will be three distances r, this d and d to power 1 by 3. Okay. And same will be for second and third conductor. Okay. So overall, how many different type of distances we have? R, D, and D. So we will multiply three distances. Because the same three distances are applicable for second and third conductors. So overall we have three type of distances here only. So the overall GMR will be R into D square to power 1 by 3. Similarly for conductor of 4 strand, this will be R into D cube to power 1 by 4. 